Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. President Trump has just strengthened US sanctions against the International Criminal Court, describing it as an extraordinary threat to the United States. Well, my guest today is the president of the ICC, Chile Ibo Osage. Now, the court was set up to end impunity for the worst of crimes. So is it now time to acknowledge that that grand ambition will never be realized? Judge Chile Ebo Osage in The Hague, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much for having me. It's, um, it's an honor to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you on at this very sensitive time for the International Criminal Court. President Donald Trump has declared your court an extraordinary threat to the United States of America. You are locked in conflict with the world's most powerful nation. How damaging is that for the court? We look at it in terms of uh, from the perspective of what this court was established to do. This court was established as a place of last resort where victims of genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, victims of the crime of aggression can go in the last resort to look for justice, access to justice for them when that access to justice has become unavailable or was unavailable anywhere else at a national level. That is what this court was established to do. But you can't be an effective court of last resort or indeed any resort if the United States of America, the most powerful nation on earth still, refuses not just to recognize your legitimacy, but now goes so far as to impose sanctions on top officials of the court, not letting them into the United States and talking about imposing financial sanctions too. We don't use that word sanction, uh, just so you know. I'll get to your answer in a minute. But the reason why we don't use the word sanction, we have to use the word for what it is, uh, uh, what, what happened. That is, these are acts of coercion against an international court of justice acts of coercion. Sanctions is what you impose on apartheid South Africa for grave growth violations of human rights. Sanctions is what you impose on countries and entities that are said or known to sponsor terrorism. Sanctions are what you impose on states that violate the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. What happened here was a frontal attack against the rule of law and the idea of judicial independence. Now, the question you ask is um, what then for a court of justice? Let's remember again that this is a court of justice and we have to stand by doing our work. The idea that we have to shy away or be deterred by the uh, bringing force to bear goes against the whole idea of justice. As you remember, was it Plato that says, you cannot expect justice where might is right. It is for the world now to decide whether might is so right as to detract this international court of law so from doing be, what it ought to do for the judge, sake of victims, yeah, yeah, for be, their to, to be clear, access to I, I just want to be very clear about what you're saying. You're saying you have no regrets that you and, uh, of course, the, the, the prosecution team at the ICC decided to launch an investigation into allegations of serious crimes, crimes against humanity, war crimes potentially, in Afghanistan involving not just Afghan forces, Taliban forces, but also U.S. military personnel. You have no regrets about that. We have no regret about doing justice. Let me put it that bluntly. The uh, prosecutor decides what case to bring to the court. And when the prosecutor does that, the judges have no influence on what the prosecutor does in that regard. But once she poses a question of law, a question of justice for the judges of the court, the judges must answer it. It is no excuse or we cannot deter be deterred because somebody 
flex his muscle in this way. To do that, quite frankly, is to accept the proposition that it is okay to bribe judges or a court of law from doing their work. And we should all say, well, yes, because a powerful state has bribed a court of justice, so we should all accept it as a new norm. We cannot uh, accept that proposition. But I'm looking at the, the mission statement of your ICC and it says you, the president, one of your responsibilities is specifically in the area of external relations to maintain relations with the nation states. Now, I would put it to you that you have grossly failed in your job in the sense that whatever the rights and wrongs of the US response, you should surely have seen it coming. Is there no way that you could have headed off what is now a profound crisis for the ICC? Because if you have this toxic relationship with the United States, however you slice and dice it, you're in big trouble. I think you characterize it too strongly in a hyperbolic way, grossly failed. I don't believe that um, the BBC would have been said to have, been grossly, have grossly failed in their mission of trying to educate and inform the world and make it a better place in the way that you can because you've tried and it didn't work. Whether or not somebody decides to see that as gross failure, that's up to them. Now, the question is this. We have been on this um, mission of trying to encourage the United States to be with us and uh, we continue to hope that they will join us and, and uh, support the uh, court that's established to cater to, for justice for those who have endured genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, the crimes of aggression. That is what we were established to do. Of course, it will be difficult uh, a task to do because the world accepted this idea of creating this court because they said we are tired of a long history of a chronicle of, of humanity that is uh, riven with those stories and but, no but, permanent but, 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 place uh, of justice for them. So but, that is a difficult task because if the people knew to behave, we would not have this court. This court was created because of failure of humanity to respect I, the humanity I, of one another. I, I understand that. I just want to know what you do now on this specific and rather grave problem. You've launched we this investigation. We do our job, Stephen. We will keep on doing our work of justice. We'll keep on the course if... But, but, but with earlier, respect, Judge, if, you, you uh, clearly won't do that when it comes to... It. With respect, you can't and won't do that in Afghanistan because it's quite clear the Afghan government won't cooperate with you and the United States has no intention of cooperating with you. I'm going to give you a couple of quotes. The Defence Secretary says, that is Mark Esper in the US, says, rest assured the men and women of the US Armed Forces will never, ever appear before the ICC. And Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, described you as a kangaroo court, corrupt, grossly ineffective. The court is an ideological crusade against American service members. So whatever you want to do in the future, you certainly will not and cannot take on the United States in Afghanistan for their actions in the past, because there's no way the US is going to cooperate in any way. First of all, I must have to ignore, of course, the, um, the, the, the slur language you just uh, piled in there from them. I, I shouldn't expect you to have taken that, them very seriously as to bring it into, into the question. As you know, well, it's, it not, is, it's obviously it's it, not my language. It's language it is coming the, from the, the very, of very of top of the US when government. They do their work, there's a smear campaign against them. In the UK, judges were called enemies of the people. In, in everywhere else, in the U, US, when they do, judges do their work, they are called political. So it is um, uh, part of the judicial cause, if you like, that when judges or courts of law do their work, those who don't like what has been done, find a way to embark on smear campaign, and that is what has happened there. Now, that is the matter of the smear campaign. As to the question of the um, people not wanting to uh, come in here, actually that can be a legitimate objective to say American servicemen must not come to the ICC for justice, Afghan nationals must not come to ICC for justice. That's a legitimacy to that on the basis that ICC is a court of last resort. 
So justice needs to be done at home. So it is for the United States authorities to do justice where there's a cry for it. It is for Afghan authorities to do justice where there's a cry for justice, where there's nowhere else to go. Then people come to the ICC and we have to do our best to uh, answer the question uh, yes, of justice. Yes, well, the United States, the not, just in, not just in the Trump administration, but for many years, uh, many, many years, has made it plain that it won't sign up to the statutes of Rome and won't bow to the authority of the ICC because it is absolutely confident that its own judicial process, civilian and military, is more than sufficient to ensure that any American citizen will be held to a high, the highest of standards when it comes to their behaviour on the battlefield or anywhere else. So are but you, you, say, you, are you saying the, you, you don't see believe the flaw that? already in that argument, don't you? It's very much like saying this, and I've been hearing this argument made a lot, uh, uh, for, forever, more or less. It's like this. Let us say somebody comes to me and says, Ebo Suji, uh, let's say the um, Child Welfare Society, Ebo Suji, uh, we see that your um, children are malnourished. You've not been feeding them well. It has to be an excuse, is it, for me to say, go away, I can very well provide for my children. But that doesn't answer the question, are they malnourished or not? That is the issue here. It is not whether or not America or Afghanistan or any country can bring their own people to justice. It is the question of, are they doing it? That is what we want them to do. If they do it, we have no jurisdiction. The ICC is a court mm. of last resort. That means that if states are doing justice at home, we do not have the authority to step in. And well, it should be that way. All it right, is I'll, their I'll, right and responsibility to do justice at home. So we don't get into this situation of saying people come to the ICC for justice or not. Let them do it at home. There, there was one other strong element to the uh, U.S. condemnation of the ICC just a, a few days ago that came from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and that was your stance on uh, launching an investigation into the Gaza war and the Israel-Palestine conflict. Now, on what basis exactly did you launch that investigation? Because Israel, of course, is not a signatory to the statutes of Rome. It doesn't recognize your authority. So what basis did you launch that investigation on? Uh, for purposes of clarity and the facts, I'm not aware that ha that has been any investigation launched. That is a matter of fact. I'm not aware that that is the case. What has happened is this. Well, excuse the, me, but as me far finish, as I understand it, your chief let prosecutor let has decided to launch, the, a, a, to open a formal investigation into the violence in Gaza in 2014. She made that decision in December of 2019. See, what's going on is this. The, the, um, the uh, Palestinians um, referred the case to the ICC and the prosecutor decided to ask questions of the judges, a pre, even a pre-preliminary question. The question being, do we even have jurisdiction to entertain this case? That is a pre-preliminary yeah, well, question. That, and, and you've obviously so it's a decided question yes. Of law. Let me, let, please, I need to finish this so people understand. It is a question of law that was provoked by the fact that there's some dispute as to whether or not Palestine is a state. And so that is a question for the judges and those who have uh, legal submissions to make on that question of law are welcome to the court to make the arguments. States have lined up, some states have responded to the call of the judges to, if you have any submissions to make on this question of law, please come forward and make it. Some states have joined issues on it on either side judge, of yeah, the matter. Judge, it should not I, result I, I, in this me, sort of behavior. Forgive me for saying this, but I, I need to keep this as simple as possible. The point surely is this. You and your fellow judges have decided to recognize Palestine as a state. And as I understand it from the documentation, you've said that uh, the ICC has legal standing uh, in Gaza, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem. Now, of course, East Jerusalem was annexed by the Israelis uh, after the 67 war. So are you saying that you recognize East Jerusalem as Palestinian sovereign territory? Now, this is now difficult because I don't know what you're reading, where you're quoting from. I Normally, as a, as a lawyer and a judge, uh, we do not um, allow uh, you know, materials like that to be introduced if you haven't shown it to 
uh, people you are addressing so they can verify well, it, it's, not, it's not a complicated context, question but also authenticity. Judge. one second and context so i don't know where you got it that the judges have come to that i do not recall any such judgment from this court well, I, I, I looked at the documentation, and as I understand it, the ICC... But you said, you said you and your fellow judges, I and my fellow judges, I have never said any such sort of thing because I've never had that kind of question presented to me to answer. So I don't know any, how you're, where you're getting this from. If I may say so, Judge, the Israeli government clearly believes that it's none of your business to even be considering whether Palestine is a state. Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, has said you're showing yourselves to be politicized, obsessed with carrying out a headhunting operation against Israel and the US while turning a blind eye to the world's worst human rights defenders, including the regime in Iran. Now, again, here we go with slur language, um, you know, calling, characterizing a uh, court of law that's supported by 123 states parties by the United Nations, the human rights organizations, the European Union is strongly behind us. So all this um, slur language that's used uh, to, to, to detract attention from any issue just wouldn't work. The issue here is about the humanity, the common humanity that we share. The Palestinians have presented a question for the court. So apparently, as you would know, Israel is in the other side of that question. So it would not be correct to assume the Palestinian position as correct or the Israeli position as correct. It is an issue that the judges have to contemplate, reflect upon, hear arguments from both sides on that question and then come to a decision. So we cannot take it All right. that when one side says something, that is the law. No, well, we, you, that's you, not you, how we you, work you, here. You, you, you've addressed what you call slurs coming from Washington, coming from Israel, but there is a much wider critique of the ICC that goes far beyond specific cases. And that is that after almost two decades in operation, your court has a deeply disappointing record. As you said, it was set up with such grand ambition to be the court of last resort for the worst of human behaviors. But the truth is after $1.5 billion, 18 years, you can claim just eight convictions of which only three individuals are currently standing convictions. That, given all that has happened in the world over the last two decades, is a really, frankly, pathetic record, isn't it? Again, hyperbolic characterization. Can you tell me what it should be well, uh, if one, by, if one for only you to looks, measure it as successful? If one only looks at the egregious human, humanitarian sort of abuses we've seen from Myanmar to Syria to a host of other conflict arenas where we know that crimes, terrible crimes have been committed that will not be prosecuted in their home courts. One would like to think the ICC might have played a more proactive, more effective role. I think that question comes from not understanding how ICC works and the international law itself. The ICC works on the international plane. What is the hope you're offering to Syrians when the truth is the Syrian government, of course, will not cooperate with you. And the UN Security Council, which could give you a mandate to uh, investigate in Syria, will not because the Russians would veto any such exercise. What hope are you giving to people in Syria of justice? You, when it comes down to it, in far too many situations because of geopolitics, simply don't have the power to intervene. Here is the hope, Stephen. There is the hope. There is the hope. First of all, what you describe is the very deficiency that I'm talking about, which international law suffers from time immemorial. But still, it's better that we have it than none at all. But here is the problem. It, you should be taking to task those at the Security Council who block the referrals to these other places you're talking about. And what I'm saying is this, that the I, what you just pointed out are uh, the very deficiencies of international law that I spoke about earlier, which we all have to, both you, me, everybody, uh, civil society, need to take to the United Nations and the Security Council, encourage them to refer these cases where we see human rights violations occurring and bring them so that justice can be had. Now, but even in spite of that, and I hope that gets done so that we can have justice, but there is the hope even that 
Eventually, as long as we have the ICC, and I need to say this again, as long as we have a permanent international criminal court, there will always be hope that those who do these behaviors, who grossly violate human rights, commit international crimes, they can run, but they cannot hide forever. Uh, Judge, Eventually, uh, we, we, we must ICC in a will be there. There'll yeah. be a court where they can be asked questions right. of well, justice. That okay. is a hope. I, you keep using this word hope, and I want to end with this thought. I accept everything you've said about the difficulties of operating in the geopolitical climate that you have to operate, particularly the UN Security Council, which clearly is stalemated so often. But nonetheless, one of your friends in the international community, the Dutch Foreign Minister, Steph Bloch, has made these points. He says, number one, your operations are often far too slow, far too cumbersome. The judges, he says, are too focused on trying to raise their own salaries, which are almost $200,000 tax-free per year, when they should be focused on streamlining their own operations in The Hague. And he says, we don't expect the unattainable, but we do expect better. The ICC too often focuses on, for example, countries in Africa where you've got extensive investigations and doesn't touch the more difficult areas. We've mentioned Syria, but there are others too. And he says, you've got to do better. Do you accept that? Now, um, uh, Mr. Block is a very, very strong supporter of this court. I know. And, um, uh, uh, let me finish, please. Uh, uh, he is a very strong supporter of this court, and I have told him that, and we know that even in these uh, recent events, he was one of the um, one minister that stood up firmly against this behavior that ICC was subjected to in the last couple of days. But I disagreed with him on that, and I told him um, plainly that I disagreed with him. Uh, I regret that you brought the matter up. Of course, whenever you talk about uh, salary, it's something that excites in interest. Now, I hope I, I was hoping you wouldn't bring it up. Let me tell you this. Uh, I know that the salary of ICC judges is just a fraction or for to pay some of your people at the BBC, uh, you pay up to 1.7 million pounds oh. to some uh, sports broadcasters. I haven't asked you yourself Judge, how much uh, you, we, you we, earn. We, Excuse we, me. With respect, and I do that, believe, really I do believe nothing... that somebody say that 250,000 pounds is chicken feed for them. Now, we don't earn that much. Uh, all we were saying was that the pay of ICC judges need to be brought up to the level of other international judges. Look, 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 we, the point Mr. So Block is making that. is that in many different ways you could do better, even within the difficult environment you're working. Do you accept that? If that is absolutely correct, yes, indeed. And there's no question about that. I'll be the first to tell you that um, as a human institution, uh, there's always room to do better. In your country there, the judiciary also has faced its own difficulties. All over the world, the judiciary does have questions about needing to improve on, on doing justice. And we are doing that at the ICC. We're not perfect, but I say we are. it's much better to have this and work on it to improve things. And we wish everybody to join us in improving the methods. But in the end, in the end, we need a court of last resort. We cannot, even if we do spot instances like happens in every judicial system in the world, I repeat that, in every judicial system in the world, we cannot then, because we can spot some areas of improvement that need to be had in those systems, yeah, because of that, that's throughout the whole thing and All right. leave no place for victims to go for justice in the end. All right, we have to end right there, but Judge Chile Ebo Osaji, I thank you so much for joining me from The Hague. Thank you. Thank you very much.